it's Deborah from the Attic and we've gone back to our little houses today. So in a previous video, which I will link up there, I showed you how you can draw these pretty little houses and these lovely sort of cypress style trees. And these houses are based on houses that I see around me in the southwest of France where I live. And these are like little pigeon airs. And pigeon airs were very tall, slim buildings that were used back in the day to house pigeons, which were used uh, for meat and food and whatever else you can get out of a pigeon. And you see loads of them in the countryside uh, around the southwest of France. Now in that video I showed you how to draw them and I said I would come back and show you how I have coloured my houses because I use um, I use a very specific way of colouring things in. Um, but before I show you what I do I thought it might be fun just to show you how to do these leaves. These leaves are based on fronds that I showed you how to draw when we were drawing sea scenes and that's another video that I will link up there. And in the sea scenes uh, video we did these tall little fronds of very very simple leaves. I used them in this image here to create a sort of um, a border uh, or a nice little frame for my houses but I didn't actually show you how I drew them and I thought it might be a nice idea before we start colouring to just do it on this here. So I've already drawn out uh, my little houses and the main elements of my scene and I've also very roughly drawn, you can see how roughly it is, I've very roughly drawn this circle. My leaves uh, follow half of or a quarter of this circle, maybe it's a third. You can decide how much of the circle you want to fill in. You could do the whole thing, you could do a whole wreath, or you could just do a little bit on the bottom and a little bit around the top, which is how I've done this. So I'm going to ink these in so that I can show you in a little bit more detail how I did them, because they are ever so slightly different to uh, the sea scene fronds, but not very much. So I start with a line where I want my leaves to go. and then I just work from one end to the other. So then I will take a line off and do you remember I said it's nice for your leaf to look as if it's linked to the rest of the plant by including this tiny little piece here off the branch. It makes it look like they're part of uh, the foliage properly and they're not just sort of hanging off it without anything to attach them. And you add your leaves just where you want them and I hope this is a shape that you'll be familiar with, is basically an elongated triangle. If you break it down, as we were doing when I was explaining this the first time, it is just an elongated triangle. Or if you like, it's a V shape, and then there's a sort of a hat on top. However you like to think of it, whatever works for you is great. And my theory is that if you can write, you can draw. Because when we learned how to write as children, it was really hard, wasn't it? You had to concentrate on forming the shapes. You had to learn how to hold the pen or the pencil in the right way. And I remember writing letters the wrong way around and getting those forms all really wrong. But we, we didn't just arrive at writing one day and say, OK, I can't write, this is hard, I'm not going to bother. We persevered with it. And that's kind of what you have to do with drawing. That's why my little drawings are really simple. They're not complicated. Um, I like drawings where I can work with a basic shape. If I can break down the shape and see how it works, I'm, I'm a happy bunny. So, for example, with the little houses, you can see it's basically a rectangle and it has a triangle on top. That's the basic shape. You play around with it a little bit, you add a little curve on the bottom, you add a little curve to the roof, but that's essentially all that little house is. And it's the same with the leaves, they're very very simple shapes. To make them look a little bit different from the sea scene fronds, I added these little curly cues. I've penciled these in, but you can see it's just a little loop and then let it dangle. And these are great fun to do. I'm going to change that one a little bit. And you can use them to elongate the shape and take more of your foliage around your circle. I'm going to finish doing the leaves up here, then I'm going to rub away uh, my pencil marks 
and then we'll start on the colouring. These are the colour pencils that I use. These are Faber-Castell, they're polychromos. They're really nice. I bought them some years ago after a lot of research, watching lots of YouTube comparison videos. Um, and then I went into an art shop and I tried them and I immediately really, really liked these. I like that you don't need a whole load of pressure in order to get colour onto uh, a piece of paper so you don't need to sort of scratch away at the paper. They go on really smoothly, they blend really nicely with each other and there's a huge colour range as you will see if I flip through my pencil case. So um, the irony is I'm going to say to you that you don't need a huge number of coloured pencils like what I have. You actually uh, can do with far fewer than this. The reason that I know that is because before I bought these pencils, uh, I used a, a much smaller set. They weren't polychromos, they were just like really standard cheapy cheap uh, colouring pencils. And I think there was no more than 24 in the pack. And that is actually where my colouring technique grew from. The fact that I had a very limited range of colours in comparison to what I have now is how I learned to colour in. And I still use that technique, albeit I have a lot more choice now but you don't need all of these. So if you have a standard colouring set of say 24 pencils, the chances are you're going to get a light and a dark of a number of shades. So let's say you have a light and a dark brown. Well that's what I used to have and that's where I started from. So I would never use just one colour to colour an image. Um, the other colour that you would definitely have as a standard in any cheapy cheap set would be a red or an orange. And these are the three pencils that I'm going to use to colour in my buildings. And I'm going to start with the lightest one. I'm going to uh, begin to colour in my tiny little houses using a circular motion. And I'm not worrying too much about going right up to the edges because I know I'm going to come back and redo these. But I'm going to get my basic colour down to begin with. And I like using a circular motion because it tends to save getting those lines you know when you, you sort of do something up and down and then you go to the next layer down you do something up and down again and that's when it looks as if you can see where the colour has stopped and where it started so let me show you what I mean so if you colour like this up and down up and down up and down and then you go to the next layer and you do up and down up and down up and down you'll begin to see where the, uh, where you've started your new sort of layer if you if you colour in that style. So that's why I find that the circular motion is a little bit better. The other thing about the circular motion is keep it loose because that will then allow other colour that I'm going to put on top to find a space to colour in uh, within the circles created in my loopy or round style of colouring. And I hope that will become obvious when I when I sort of finish showing you how I how I do things. So this is just a very very loose circular colouring motion. I haven't coloured it in so tightly that it's just brown and there's no space for anything else any other colour to lie on top. Now these pencils that I'm using will blend beautifully but back in the day when I didn't have these and I was using cheap supplies this is the technique that I found really really helped me. So now I'm going to go in with my darker brown and I'm going to colour where there might be shadow. I'm going to colour down the side of this little building because it has the taller building in front of it. I'm also going to colour a little bit up from the bottom because that's an effect I quite like. Um, and then I will colour around under the roof. I'm using my circular motion again very lightly. I don't need to press very hard because my darker brown coloured pencil is finding the space that was left when I drew my when I did my sort of circles of colour. The other reason that I like to colour around an object like this is I rather like the vignette style that it gives you. So it's a little bit darker around the outside and lighter on the inside. And you can see it um, on this tree. 
you can see that I've coloured around the outside but the centre of the tree is hardly coloured in at all. I rather like that look. I'm going to go on to my next building and I'm going to do my little circular colouring under the roof. I'm going to do a little bit at the bottom, there's less shadow on this house because there isn't another house standing in front of it, although there is a little tree here. So we'll just bring this bit of shading down a little. Maybe think of it as shading rather than colouring actually. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a lighter colour under there so it sort of looks as if it's blending in. Now, if you have one of these things, which is a paper blending stick, you can use this. If you don't have a paper blending stick, use your finger, because that's what I used for many, many years, blending with my fingers. And just rub your fingers over the top and, uh, and that will help pull the colour together. And um, I think it gives it a rather nice effect as well. So you might remember that I said I never colour anything in with just one colour of pencil and now I'm going to introduce my red. I'm going to apply it very very lightly into those little spaces again using that sort of circular motion because that circular motion leaves room for extra colour to be layered on and I'm adding red to the brown because I think it makes it more interesting anyway than just having a little brown house and also the stone that is used to create the pigeonets in the southwest of France is this warm sort of terracotta sort of honey colour. It's, uh, it's really pretty. I don't even know if you'll be able to see this. It is so subtle. But this is how I like to colour. And I'm just adding in the red in the bits where my colour is lighter. I don't really need to go right up to the edges again because I've already got nice shading there with my, my dark brown. Although having said that, I'm just going to do this little bit here very subjective. There isn't any wrong way of doing it. Um, I'm just showing you the way that I learned to colour when I only had very limited supplies. So I've added my red and again I'm just going to go in and blend that a little bit. Now still working with those same three pencils. I'm going to colour in the doorways. I'm also going to finish doing the doorways. So I'm going to make them look like proper doors because uh, somebody commented that the houses looked like they were screaming. And when I went back and looked at them, I was like, yeah, they do actually. So um, I'm going to uh, change the way that I colour the doors by starting with my, uh, my darker pencil. And I'm just going to do my little circular motions again. I'm going to do that for both doors. And then I'm going to use my lighter one. So I'm working a little bit back to front this time. Usually I start light and I go dark, but I'm, I'm varying at that this time. I'm not going to introduce red into the door because I already have red in the house. I'll just blend those in a little bit again. And then to make them look like proper doors, I'm going to add uh, two different ways that you can do this. One way is just to do lines up and down so it looks like a heavily boarded wooden door. There we go. The other way that I'm going to do this is based on houses that I used to see around um, north west uh, Germany where they have these uh, sort of chevron effects on their doors. So even though this is based on a French style of building you can still play around with the doors as much as you want. What about colouring in little trees? Well, I'm going to use the same principle. I'm going to use three different colours. And again, this is what you would hopefully get in a standard uh, box of pencils. So I've got a light green, a dark green and a yellow. I'm going to start with my yellow. And I'm just going to roughly colour in the centre of each of my little trees. I'm not even going to go out to the edge because I know I'm going to do something a little bit different with those. So that's pretty much all I need for my trees. Now I'm going to take my light green. I'm not getting hung up on giving you colour names or colour references or anything because if you don't have exactly the same pencils what's the point? It's more useful for you to know that it's a light green or a dark green or a light red or a dark red or a light 
light red, maybe pink. <laughs> I'm adding in my lighter green just around the periphery of the tree. I'm going to keep my yellow in the centre pretty much as it is. Um, and where the tree impinges on the rooftop of the buildings, I'll put some green here. I'm going to put a little bit of green in the top. And this isn't about perfect shading and casting shadow. It's just about what I think looks nice. <laughs> I love shading, actually. It's something that um, I really enjoy doing. You know, when you have the light coming from a certain direction, you have you create lots of shadows and contrast areas. I really like that aspect of colouring in. But that's not really the function of um, this exercise because our little buildings are just our little fantasy buildings. Once I've got my dark green in place, or my light green, sorry, I'm just going to go in and blend a little bit. And already, I think those trees look quite fun, but I'm going to add my dark green to finish it off. And it's going to lie over the top of where that lighter green has been. And by mixing the two colours like that, I think it gives you greater interest on the trees. They look more three-dimensional, whereas if you just use one green, they're going to look very static. I think this gives them more texture. OK, so now I blend again. Just using my finger. If you do have one of those little stumps, one of those little paper stumpy things, um, you just you just, it's just a more controlled way, I suppose, of uh, blending. But I actually got them, the blending stumps, free with something else that I got, so I'm quite happy just blending with my finger. It's fine. I'm just looking at my doors again, and I want to create a greater contrast with uh, the bottom of the door and the top of the door, so I'm just going to pop in with my dark brown. And you do this all the way through when you you sort of step back go back, have a look at it and think, no, I need to do a little bit more in that area. I'm going to hang on to this brown because I'm going to do a little bit of brown for my tree trunks. And I'm just going to use uh, my single colour of brown because these are, these are quite small. It's just a small area. Now before I uh, do the grass, I want to show you how I do the roofs. So I'm, I'm going back to my three colours that I used for the building. So I've got my red, my light brown and my dark brown. And this time I'm going to start with my red. My houses are going to have much more of a red tinge to them um, than the body of the house did. And this is what I mean about using colours and blending colours in order to get a different uh, texture and a different effect. So I'm using the same colours, but I'm giving greater emphasis to the red. And that will create a distinction between the stonework and the rooftop. I'm going to use my light brown to soften the red. So it's not just a red roof. I'll blend those a little bit. Then I'll use my dark brown just here where the roof is overshadowed by the building standing in front of it and I'm going to do a little bit around the bottom of the roof and up the side. And this is where my sort of vignette style of colouring comes in. I really like it when the centre of whatever it is I've coloured is lighter than the outside edge. So you can see that the colours are related, but the red is stronger on the roof. To do the grass, I'm going to take my light green. I'm going to do those tiny little circles again. But I'm only really going to do it part way down the design. So in each of these, where I've coloured in the grass on the hill, you can see I've only coloured in the section that's closest to where the house is sitting. I don't colour all the way down, but I will fade the colour. So I will get softer and softer with the colour as I come down the hill. So I start with this nice light pale colour 
and I'm doing big loopy round circular motions to um, allow myself plenty of space for when I lay on some of the darker green to come into play. I'm leaving it space on the paper. And this time when I colour with my uh, dark green, I'm only going to colour in a little bit near our horizon or near where the houses actually sit. So I'm not going to colour all the way down as far as my light green has gone. Has gone. I'm going to do maybe half of where my light green has gone. And then I can use my finger to blend it in again. If I'm not too happy with where it joins, if I think I can see the join, I'll go back with my light green and just soften the areas where I think the join can be vis is visible. Because I don't, I don't really want it to be visible. In some, in some colouring, that's a nice effect. It just depends on your image and how you want your image to look. Now where the colour begins to fade uh, and is lighter on the paper, that's where I'm going to do my heaviest sort of finger blending. So then you get this lovely effect. I think that's rather nice. Now I should also say that I'm colouring these much quicker than I normally colour, so something like this I will take ages over, ages over, I do tiny 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 little circles. It depends um, how sort of detailed you want to be about it. Uh, I'm doing this fairly quickly to explain my technique and hopefully uh, give you some ideas. Now for these leaves I've stayed with the same sort of colour palette, so I've gone with a red and uh, a yellow. So let's try that with this one and uh, this red. And I've also uh, not just uh, coloured in the same colour in each leaf, I've varied it. So again, I'm going to start with my, my sort of yellowy colour and I'm going to go very, very lightly into each of the leaves. Now, because these are quite small little areas, I'm not doing my circular motion. I'm just doing whatever it takes to get a little bit of colour into these spaces. And then I take my red and I just take uh, some of the red, maybe some of the leaves will have red at the base and along the side, like that. But your eye will quickly accept, even though when you're putting the colours down at first you think, well, it looks a bit strange, your eye accepts it. And I think the reason for that is because you're actually using all of the colours that you've used already in your buildings. So that is how I would, I would finish off my colouring in. I hope this has been useful. I hope it's given you some ideas for how you can use your own pencils, even if you don't have the range of colours that I have. I hope I've shown you you don't need that. But that's essentially how I colour in. I use usually three colours to colour in one uh, space, if it's a big enough space like a tree or a house. And I will try and use the same colour palette throughout, whether it's to colour leaves or to colour grass. I try not to vary the colours too much. I think my technique works best when you have complementary colours. Uh, and I also like to leave a bit of space in the centre of whatever it is that has been coloured in, because I think that gives it a sense of texture and dimension. I hope that's helpful to you. Let me know, because if you'd like me to talk more about this, we can do that in future videos. But I have got some more plans coming up for future drawing videos, so um, keep watching for those. And if you've got suggestions for what you might like to try and draw, um, let me know and let's see what we can do, because we're all just learning together and it's great fun. And I'm really, really pleased that you enjoy these drawing videos so much, because I love doing them. They're great fun. I'm going to say thank you very much for your time as always, thank you for watching, and until we meet again, stay safe and take care. <laughs>